fire. I mean, come on, who doesn't love fire? Just everything about it, the, the smells, the utility, the sounds, it's just great. Talk about style and function. Humans have gotten way too good at making fires. I mean, come on, we flick a switch or push a button and we've got instant flame. There's just, there's just no more sport in it. So I've decided to challenge myself to make a fire the hardest way that I could find. Creating fire from sticks is always something I've wanted to do, so I've decided to set myself a challenge. By the end of this week, I want to be able to make a fire from friction alone. All right, let's fire up Google, hop online here and see what we got ourselves into. We're looking for what to do, what to make, but most importantly, what to make it out of. I need to know what type of wood we need to uh, start our project. So that's where we're off to first. All right, so according to my extensive research on Google, which is just looking at one blog post, we are looking for a soft wood for a hearth board and drill, uh, meaning like a... Uh, uh, cedar is one option, and uh, cottonwood was another. Those were the, the ones that seemed like they might be in my area. There are some others, but... Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and look for those. Hopefully they are around here. All right, uh, pardon the wind noise, but uh, I'll make a long story short for you guys. Apparently there is only one type of tree that grows around here, which is really unfortunate because it does not work for a bow drill fire. So we're gonna have to come up with uh, another solution. Um, not sure what that is yet. There's only like a bunch of pre-cut cedar that's been sitting drying in the sun for like 80 years that I could use. That would be That'd be great. Fence posts, yeah. Fence posts, at least the old ones, were made of cedar, and uh, they are about as dry as wood could possibly be because they have been just dead and sitting in the sun for uh, longer than I've been alive. But uh, we're not gonna pull up a fence post that is in the ground. I'm gonna go track down one that is just sitting in a pile somewhere, and I think that'll work. I think this will. Uh, this, this is our solution. I feel. All right, we'll take our lovely piece of cedar and we'll go ahead and chop off a piece that will serve as our spindle and then we will carve it into a nice cylinder with a dull point on one end, a sharp point on the other, and boom, Bob's your uncle, you got yourself a drill. For the bow, pretty straightforward. Grab yourself a live piece of wood, cut off those leaves, cut a notch in either end, string a rope between them, and you're moving on to your hard board. Last step, throw a hole in a flat piece of wood, cut a notch in it, and call it a day. Whoa. It's day two. We're back at it. Yesterday we got all our stuff made and uh, we're gonna give it, a, give it a go today. So it's a little hot, so we moved to a new location in the shade and I, I think that's gonna help. I don't know why I picked such a hot day to do this on, but uh, the shade will be nice. So right, let's get it. So the first part of it was just me kind of setting everything up and figuring it out. I was just gonna run a test run just to get the feel for it, see how this next few hours was gonna go. And uh, yeah, pretty quick, I got it up and running and, and started drilling. <laughs> and then I kept drilling. And then I did some more drill. Okay, it's a lot of drilling, I'll be honest with you guys. There's a lot more drilling. I cut a lot of it out, but just know there was a lot more that went into this video than what you're seeing on screen. All right, so uh, just a few impressions off my uh, first attempt here. I got my hole pretty good going. I was getting some smoke and stuff. But uh, this, this paracord here that I'm using, it's uh, just not gripping the spindle as good as I'd like. It's a, as soon as I put any downward pressure on it, it just like slides around. So I'm gonna see if I can replace this paracord uh, with something else. So I'm gonna try that. So after some scrounging around, I was able to get my hands on some leather cordage and that seemed to do better. I gripped the spindle a lot better. It did seem to wear through and it snapped once, but uh, other than that, it was, it was much better, I would recommend. Then it was back to the grind, literally. I kept drilling and, and now that I had more grip, I could push down harder on my handhold. And so I noticed that I was getting more smoke than last time. It was like thicker and whiter. And I was getting excited. I was like, man, this is going somewhere. So I looked and it started forming a coal from the dust coming out. And I was I was getting excited. I, I was doing it. I was I was making a fire with just sticks. And and the coal, it once I stopped drilling, it was still smoldering and it, it doesn't stop smoking like it did last time man I was I was excited I was like I'm gonna get this on my second try 
with, with excitement and care, I, I transferred the coal into a cotton ball in hopes that it would catch it and started gingerly blowing on it. All right, we've got progress. It's smoldering. We've got a smolderer. All right, I'm just trying to keep it alive here. Oh yeah, we got some red hot coals. This is good. This is good. Oh, my hot coal. Yes, that's right. I dropped my only coal, my one single life-giving coal onto the ground. And, and because it's made of dust, it fell apart into dust. I know, shocking, but I was, I was distraught to say the least. Darn it. All right, from here on out, I was taking no chances. I got everything ready ahead of time. I cut up a bunch of small sticks. I fixed my hearth board. I carved a new hole. I put a new tip on my drill. I was ready to go. I thought for sure, since I was so close on my second try, that I'd get it really soon. Oh, how naive I was. All right, I'll spare you the details, but the next few hours looked a lot like this, and this, and this just on loop over and over again and uh we did have a few more close calls uh, a few hot coals and also this one which was great but i i botched it and I, I let the fire go out that, that one's on me i i that was me but uh, we're not stopping until we get a fire that we can roast a hot dog on that's the goal but in the end many hours of drilling and then consecutive disappointments that they finally did me in so i decided to call it a day All right, it is day three. Let me tell you, I was determined today. I was not leaving until I got a fire going. One major change I made is I, I switched out the tinder for some birch bark that I found. I think that'll do a lot better. You know, birch bark is just the, the king of all fire starters. So I think this will do as good. And then it was back to it. Uh, but you've seen this all before, so we can just fast forward. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, honestly here, no idea what I was trying to say. My microphone died, so. We can just skip that too, yeah. Until here. Many hours of drilling and one knife wound later, we got this attack. That's right, we got it. Come on, look at that flame. Oh, it's gorgeous. Oh, it's so good. I mean, as you can tell from my reaction of sheer excitement, you can just tell how pumped that was. Let's go. But no, it was it was really great to accomplish this challenge that I set out for myself and uh, be able to enjoy a nice warm campfire. Yeah, I was, I was a happy clam, that's for sure. All right, guys, while I put out this fire, you know, I greatly appreciate if you send me a like, maybe a subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, because there are indeed more on the way. I'll see you in the next one. Oh, what did you do to stay cool during the heat wave? Oh, I just put on jeans and a long sleeve shirt and made a fire the most physically intensive way possible.